We've defined heat and talked about heat flow previously. And now we're going to focus on the three types of heat transfer that exist. Here we'll talk about conduction, then we'll move on to convection and radiation. And in the case of conduction, this is what occurs when two bodies at different temperatures are placed in contact, then the heat will transfer from the hot body to the cold body by conduction. In other words, there has to be physical contact between the two bodies. As an idealization, let's consider the two cubes here, one maintained at a temperature Th, the other one maintained at a temperature Tc. Of course, Th is greater than Tc, and as a result, heat will flow from the hot body to the cold body. So this is our flow of heat. And what we're going to try to do is quantify how much heat flows from the hot body to the cold body per second, given a cross-sectional area, a certain length, and a certain type of material through which conduction occurs. What we'll do is we'll define the heat current, H, which is the amount of heat flowing per second from the hot body to the cold body. And the law of thermal conduction gives us that H is Ka multiplied by dt dx. Now H, as we said, is the amount of heat flowing per second from the hot body to the cold body. So it's really the rate at which heat transfers, dq dt. That's called the heat current. A is the cross-sectional area, which we'll typically see as constant in the problems that we do. You could deal with a non-constant cross-sectional area, but it does make things a little harder. dt dx is the temperature gradient. It is how quickly temperature varies with x, which makes sense because remember that heat flow is dictated by a temperature difference between the bodies. And then finally, K is called the thermal conductivity. And that's a property of the material through which you have conduction. In terms of units, this is joules per second or watts. Area, of course, is meters squared. Temperature gradient is going to be in degrees Celsius per meter or degrees Kelvin per meter. And then thermal conductivity is going to be in watt per meter Kelvin. And to get an appreciation of thermal conductivity, it's really how easily heat can flow through the material. Take a simple example. Let's say you go to the mountains and there's snow on the ground and you place a stick of wood and a metal ski pole in the snow. You bury them and you wait long enough that they're both at the same temperature because, of course, they're both buried in snow. When you pick them up with your bare hands, the ski pole, it's made of metal, feels colder, but it's not because they have the same temperature. Really what's happening is that the ski pole has a thermal conductivity that's way bigger than the stick of wood. And therefore, heat leaving your hand a lot faster gives you the impression that the ski pole is colder, but it's not really the case. Another simple example is that when you take a cake out of the oven, you're better off using a dry cloth than a wet cloth, because a wet cloth has a higher thermal conductivity than a dry cloth, and you're more likely to burn yourself with a wet cloth. So that's an illustration of what thermal conductivity is, and of course it is specific to the material in question. And we'll do a few problems in conduction where we actually use this form of the equation for the heat current, but most of the time we will have steady state flow. And this will be the case when Th is maintained constant, and Tc is maintained constant, and therefore the gradient across the length L of the connecting rod is just constant. It's delta T divided by L. So let's just write this in the case of steady state conduction, which is the most 
common. Steady state conduction will give you a constant heat current H equal to K times A, that doesn't change, and then dt dx is actually delta T divided by the length L of the connecting rod. The length L over which there's conduction anyway. It doesn't have to be a rod. But it's going to be Th minus Tc divided by the length L, which is typically a lot easier to solve than solving the above equation because dt dx could get complicated, especially if it, it's also a dependency on time. So steady state conduction is a lot easier to deal with. It gives you a constant heat current H, and you can just get that by writing Ka delta T divided by L. Thanks for watching this video. We created Cogverse Academy to help you save time by focusing on what matters most when studying for exams. If you'd like to learn how Cogverse Academy can personally help you improve your grades, check us out at cogverseacademy.com and send us an email if you have any questions. We'd love to help you.